last week or a couple weeks ago, I did one on the District of Columbia Organization Act. It kind of it set the stage in 1933 or real close to that, right after the gold standard. Okay, so the District of Columbia Organization Act, uh, just real quick, uh, Congress gave them 10 square miles, the District of Columbia, to set up a government. It didn't say a government for anyone. It just said a government. And if you look up that stuff and you understand it, you open, open your eyes and see it, it was set up as a government to realistically collect a debt. The bankers are um, in place at that time, IRS, and we even have now, which was really cool, the organization of the corporation called Internal Revenue Service in Delaware, and it was signed by three people. And so uh, now we're going to show you how they kind of keep um, you under their thumb. Now, I, I get to see documents all the time. People ask me to read documents for them and um, just kind of proofread them before they send them off to a de facto court for either. I mean, it's anywhere from this is incredible. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the right, wide range. Dog at large to federal incarceration for 97 years. So we, we get to see a lot of that stuff, and the grand jury gets to see a lot of that stuff here. We're going to talk about another thing that they, they have the ability to get you into their corner. And you don't even realize you're doing it. But if you send something to a court with a zip code on it, you're saying, I'm a slave and I'm a debtor to your organization and I have agreed to help you pay back that debt. So be careful with the zip codes. Now, the reason why I'm telling you all this is, all this stuff is, is uh, it's scary at least to go against the court, even for a small traffic ticket. And I can tell you that I have been on both ends of the stick, done a little uh, jail time for contempt of court because I didn't understand a few small rules. I understand those rules now. I also know how to get the ticket thrown out of court before it is even brought before a trial. I mean, just in a hearing. I've been able to recently help with documentation where we didn't even go to court. We sent in enough documentation so that the judge understood who we were and what that ticket was all about, which is commerce. We paid him well for releasing his, uh, what we call subrogation. All these things are really cool for if you're, if you're willing to learn and study. All this stuff is, is just a computer away from responding to the judge or to a clerk of the court because that's where the instance lies. But um, the zip code is voluntary. If you look at it, it says, see Domestic Mail Services Regulation Section 122.32. You should also know that the Postal Service cannot discriminate against the non-use of the zip code. Does anybody know you can send a letter anywhere in the world for three cents? Three cents. Now, here's, here's some homework for you to do this week. I would like for you all to send me a letter here, 1920 West Peoria, with a three cent stamp on it. But here's the only catch. You have to spell out the return address all the way. You can't, you can't abbreviate Arizona. You can't abbreviate Mr. It has to be all spelled out, everything. And write it in what we call proper English, upper lowercase, and put it in the mail. The reason why I'm, 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 I'm making that a point is because Bern, Switzerland, is the head postal service for the world. That's why Switzerland is in a, always in a neutral position. They don't enter in any wars because they are the first original jurisdiction for postal and for treaties. So if you are an international citizen by way of registered mail through bonds in Bern, Switzerland, you may have some immunities in corporate venues. Did I say that like Winston Yeah. <laughs> now, if you didn't understand that stuff, that's extremely powerful. And all you have to do is look it up. Okay, let's go to the next thumb. Um, online. Um, pull up the... Um, Washington uh, District of Columbia Act. You can also look up Winston Shroud and write down this word, Kelowna, K-E-L-O-W-N-A. Uh, when you pull that up on Google for video search, a link will come up, and it's um, nine or ten videos. I think there's nine videos there. I watched the first video at least 100 times. Now, I was going to bed at night with the video on and watching it until I fell asleep, but I put it on repeat. Now, that's called brainwashing. I don't care what you call it. People, a lot of people, my friends, uh, I don't, I don't, some of the friends I had when I started this deal are, are gone. I, they just, it scared the heck out of them that I was talking this way. But the people that I met along the way, 
have replaced them fourfold. I mean, I found a friend in Hal Epperson, and man, have we been through some stuff together. We got this, this third brain sticking out back here, or second brain that's you know got all this information in it. And when we understand how to use it, it's just like, psh, let's off the pressure and go, wow, remember that? And so we've, we've really won some battles together. You guys can do the same thing, and we'd love to be a part of your life that way so that we can encourage you to go on. We met with an attorney the other day, and he says, I won several cases. I, I just I used contract law only, and I asked for the note, and all three times they couldn't find it. We just lucked out. It was, it, they couldn't find it. And I said, dude, there, there, there are no notes. There's no notes. And he goes, what do you mean? I go, let me give you a a document so you don't think I'm crazy, but it's called Where the Fraud Begins. They get you to sign. They pay off the note with your signature. Then they take that deed and they make 40 to 50 copies of it. They put them in securities-backed mortgages. And whoever's holding the original is the fraud. That's the guy that committed the fraud, so they have Brinks armored cars come in, and they shred them by the thousands a day, so that there's no, and then they sell it to somebody real quick. So who's, who, who made the copies? Who made all the copies? I don't know. We ain't got the original. We don't know. So the original's gone. And he goes, you're kidding me. And I looked at him like, you don't know this stuff? Are you kidding me? I go, you can call the ball on him every time, because there isn't, unless it's a private note that somebody loaned somebody else some money and kept the deed in their safe, they're never going to find it. And he looked at me and I said, but you've got to be real careful. Because if you use this too much, you're going to stand out and the bankers are going to make sure the other lawyers have you for lunch. So be real careful. Is that the truth? They'll just buy him off. They'll say, hey, you're going to make a couple million dollars over the next couple years on this deal. Let's just, let's just get you to do something else. Let's, let's have you do criminal or we'll have you do accidents or we'll have you do insurance stuff. We'll just have you do something else and we'll, we'll pay your way. And he'll disappear from doing that kind of work again. So I told him to be very careful. But here's, I want to explain the zip code. Citizen of the District of Columbia. You see down here at the bottom where it says subject of Congress and a citizen of the District of Columbia who is a resident. Okay, that means you're just residing here, that you're not part of this. And you're part of the District of Columbia. So when you sign anything with a zip code, that's what it's telling you. The receipt of mail with a zip code is one of the requirements for the IRS to have jurisdiction to send you notices. Has anyone notified the, the IRS and told them that you, you don't have a zip code? Nobody has. Why didn't they tell us? They have a form that you can fill out and send to them. And here's the reason why. Whenever they pass an act, a statute, a code, they're not laws, so they have to give you remedy. They have to give you a way out. They don't have to tell you where it's out, where it's at, but they have to have it. It's like coming into this building. Does anybody know where the fire exit is? All we have to have is one, okay? And we can have it marked, but we don't have to have it lit up. That's what their program is. They don't have to tell you where it's at. So like I was explaining last year, last uh, two weeks ago, these are all the laws. The remedy for the law over here on the top left may be down here on the, in another statute, but they always give us remedy so that we don't have to participate. If you see, in fact, the Internal Revenue Service has adopted the zip code areas as internal revenue districts. See the Federal Register, Volume 51, Number 53. That's, that's one of your remedies. Wednesday, March 19, 1986. See, they understood later on in life, oh, man, these guys are getting us, so we gotta, we got we to gotta be careful because... International could come in and say we're doing something fraudulent. Does anybody know that the IRS answers to someone? Well, the IMF kind of has a thing with going on with the IRS, but um, raise that up a little more. The Postal Service is a private corporation, a quasi-governmental agency. However, they signed a treaty with Bern, Switzerland, and the UPU, the Universal Postal Union. That's it, Universal. Okay. So they are under laws also, and if they violate any of those laws, yeah. the postmaster whoever violated that law, okay, is in big trouble. Now, I sent a certified mail to a court in Kane County, Utah, and it said that it was signed for on the 7th, and he gave it back to me. But it was entered into the court record on the 6th. Now, how could they enter it into the record on the 6th if they didn't receive it till the 7th? I don't know, but I went and asked a couple of questions and filled out a form, and that postmaster is gone. I don't know where he went. I suppose that there's some insurance money to collect on that, 
I wasn't after anybody's job, and I'm not really looking to get rich. I just asked a question. Now, I'll tell you how powerful that was. When I took in a court document that was stamped and sealed, that was entered in on the 6th of October, and his notes say that it wasn't signed for by the 7th, means that they left that mail with the court and didn't get a signature until the next day. That's bad news for him. Now, I'm just telling you some of these, th these things so that maybe you'll understand before you sign something, before you put your, your zip code on it, Maybe you ought to think about a few things before you put your zip code on, especially if you're trying to make a statement that you're not in a zip code. <clears throat> Single piece rates, right there. It says uh, bearing a simplified address. Raise it down just a little. I mean, lower it just a little bit. Okay. Uh, zip codes may be omitted from pieces of mail by the general public at the single piece rates for first class mail and standard mail and from pieces bearing a simplified address. So we, uh, we went over that with a simplified address. No abbreviations. Let's raise it up some more. This is your homework for next week. What does uh, your zip code with a dash 9998 mean? Subdivision non domestic without the U.S. That's what it means right there. What? Now, non domestic without the U.S. They're telling you that if you don't want to reside in the IRS's jurisdiction or any federal district jurisdiction, just put that on your mail. So whenever you sign up for something, your Verizon bill, your water bill, uh, you get free dog food in the mail, and they want to know how your dog liked it, and you send it back. Dash 9998 means you don't live in the United States. You live in America. Did you guys know there's a difference between the United States and America? It's a well, huge what, difference. What Go the, ahead. What is the 9998? I mean, what, are, what is the 5X's? Uh, That's your zip code. So if you live in Flagstaff, it's 86004 dash 9998 and you put it in boxes like that and that relieves you of any responsibility as a resident to help pay back the debt of a nation. Well then, I thought you just said don't use zip codes. You, if you want to use a zip code, there's a, this, is what the, this is what the USPS is saying that you can do if you don't want to be part of our game. Oh, okay. The remedy. But you use the X's and not, not your zip code. You use no, your no, zip code. No, you no, actually, no. I just put X's in there because everybody has different zip codes here. But you put it in the bracket, right? And in the brackets, eliminates it from the whole deal. It's not part of the contract. That's so can you cool. just kind of handwrite that in? You can. You can put square. You can actually put the whole thing in a square box if you'd like to. They can still see it. They can get your mail to you. Okay, I'm going to go up a little bit more. So this gets even more self-explanatory. And when I pulled up the United States Post Office zip codes, there's a lot of stuff on there. I mean, there's some good stuff from, from secure party creditors on there. See, when I understand something that's going on, and I got a feeling, you know what that feeling is? It's a hunch that something's not right. You guys get the same thing. You get the same thing. You ever get a hunch when you're going through a signal light and the light flashes and you go, that wasn't right. They just took my picture. That's not right. <laughs> Did anybody um, supersede their contract on the license on their, on their vehicle in the last, say, six months? Yeah, supersede the contract. Accept it for value. Tell them that you agree with whatever they're saying as long as they can conditionally tell you why. Have you ever put conditions on any contract? That nullifies the contract. Well, on the picture, I'm sure when I get it back, if I get it, it's going to have an A for B on there, right? So we're going to A for B that thing and send it on in so that the uh, camera people can pay for their photo equipment or whatever they're doing. I don't it's know no what problem. You just said. <laughs> I don't understand. I know what you said, but I don't understand. You need to do okay. a video. I'll have to do that later, but we're going to stay on the zip code tonight. If you want to talk to me later, I can, I can talk to you about some of that stuff. There's some things that I can't talk about on the Internet. Also use zip codes right there, the third bullet point down, or within the municipal, which means corporation, exclusive legislative jurisdiction of Congress. The Pennsylvania Commonwealth is one of the several states. Now, you see how they spell that, the Pennsylvania Commonwealth? That is one of the several states. So they're talking about a de jure state. The next st st statement there, it says the, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. They just flop those two words around. You think they're talking about the same thing, don't you? I mean, I did, but I've been looking at contracts. So what they did is they flopped those two words around, and then they say, is also known as PA. That's an abbreviation. So now that's in the jurisdiction of District of Columbia. Those are two different places. Exactly. There, there's one laying right over the top of Pennsylvania that's called jurisdiction. Okay? And if your feet are under the ground instead of on top of the ground, 
That's right. That's why you say you live in the state of Arizona. You're dead. You're just a corporation. When you say you live on the land, you're a real man. 